<laughs> Guys, let's give it up for the band. What a blessing to have them up here. Holy smokes. They do this every Sunday, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to double their pay if they keep this up. I'm telling you, they're just going to double it. <laughs> we're going to add a zero to another zero, and there you go. Oh, me, oh, my. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started today. Um, I started to, uh, I, I want you to know I was raised Baptist. Uh, my mama started off Pentecostal, and then I was raised Baptist whenever I was old enough for her to drag me to church. Now, me and uh, Iluchi both had a problem growing up. We was both had drug problems. Uh, Y'all didn't know that about me and Iluchi, but our moms and daddies drug us to church. Absolutely, they drug us to church. And I can tell you there's been times I'd get out there and ride the pigs and mama would just take and, uh, you know, I'd get a little dirty uh, when I would fall off that pig. And she'd take her thumb and clean me with her wash rag and we still went to church and I couldn't get out of it. Um, but I was raised Baptist and, and what I can tell you about the Baptist life for Buster is I was so judgmental. I was terrible. I was terrible. And uh, so sometimes today through this sermon that God has laid on my heart, um, I started to say uh, First Baptist Church is somebody, but I think what we're going to do is go to the judgmental church of whatever I'm pre preaching about this morning. So if there's any Baptist people out there, they're not going to chunk cans at me this morning. It'll be good. <laughs> at me. Anyway, so... This week, uh, I had a young lady come to me. I say young lady, she's older. She got a, she's a day older, um, a year older today, matter of fact. But anyway, she come to me and asked me if I would do a song this morning in sign language. Uh, this is going to be an emotional morning. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I heard that. Ron, we're going to shut this mic down a bunch of times today. I got this funny feeling. I tell you, uh, anyway, she sent me this song. She says, I want you to do this song in sign language. So I thought, sure, you know, I, and I, I knew Reggie was preaching today. So I said, you know, what? it won't be no problem. I, I should be able to get this done. Well, I started listening to the song. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this song began to grow on me. And all of a sudden, this song brought a whole new meaning. Tuesday morning, four o'clock in the morning, God said, get up out of that bed and go put this sermon together. So I'm up at four o'clock making coffee and I start in there in the office and I began to put this sermon together. And then last night he woke me up at 12 o'clock and uh, so from 12 to 4 this morning, we refined it. <laughs> so whenever God does that, there's a reason you're here today. You're not, you are not here by accident. If you think you're accidentally walked in here just because you heard of the cowboy culture or whatever, if you think you just walked in here by accident, you're wrong this morning and you have your right to be wrong because I'm going to tell you something, God has got something for you today. So I'm going to just tell you to hang on to your hat. We're going to start off with this song. Thank you for giving me that song. And if I sent that song to you this week, I hope it spoke to you as much as it did to me. I bet I listened to that song a hundred times this week. You can ask my wife. If I was, it was just <laughs> reputatious. And I thought, wow. Today, the topic of my sermon is encounters with Jesus. You, every one of you, I don't care who you are. If you don't have Jesus living in your heart, you will have an encounter with Jesus. Because you're going to stand in front of him. It's kind of like, this is kind of the way I would put it. I, I, it's kind of like if you have cancer, 
I'm one of those guys, if I think I'm sick, I'm going to get to that doctor right away. I, I hadn't got time to be sick. I want to be healed as soon as he can because I ain't got time to be sick. You could be sick. You do not want to wait till you have that last encounter with Jesus to try to see if he would heal you. I've heard people tell me, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think God would send uh, a good person to hell because uh, we're good people. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You've got to invite him into your heart. It's something that you do. We're going to start off. I've got one, two, three, four, four encounters with Jesus that I just want to go over that I just, this is what God spoke to me about. And it just, it's been awesome. It has just been awesome. And I'm going to start off with one of my favorite. Now, here's the easy thing about today. So if you make it to John 4, if you make it to John 4, the rest of the, the, rest of the, of the verses are going to be real easy to get to because I'm going to back you up just a little bit at a time, and we're going to get there. You ain't going to turn very far. So this is not a Bible drill this morning. So anyway, i got to get you to John 4. If you didn't bring your Bible this morning... Yeah, uh, you know what? I thing Maducci's are against my religion. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, if you have to use the thing Maducci, that's okay. I'm good with that. But um, anyway, you need to bring your Bible so you'll know that what we're reading here is absolutely true, and we're not lying to you. We're not trying to pull any wool over your eyes. We're going to take God's word at God's word. We are not going to change it. Although I may bring some different things to light with my own views of it, but that's all right. You'll live over it, and we'll get there. So let's go to John 4, and we're going to go 4 through 26. One of my, wow, how did I do that? I don't know. It's okay. Okay. We're going to go to John 4. We're going to, go, we're going to start reading in, chapter, in verse 4. And we're going to go all the way through 26, okay? Woman at the well. Love this, love this uh, story. These, and, and two, the stories I'm going to be reading to you today, a lot of time the, the Bible gives you uh, analogies or, or, or things that he just wants you to understand by what he's saying. But these are actual events that happened and every one of these are actual events that happened. So you're going to be seeing this morning what Jesus actually did. But anyway, so this is about the Samaritan woman at the well. So we're going to start off in John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, it says now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of the ground where Jacob had given to his son Jacob, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, Jesus was tired, and he was, from, he was from the journey. He sat down by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. The sixth hour in this time is about 12 o'clock noon, the hottest part of the day. If you think you're here by mistake, this Samaritan woman came to the well, 12 noon, hottest part of the day. Normally, they would come to the well late in the afternoon when it's cooler, but this by no mistake, this lady came to the well. The Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had already went into town to buy some food. And he was there by himself with the Samaritan woman. And this is what the woman, the Samaritan woman said to him. You're not supposed to be talking to me. No, that's not what he said. He says, The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? In other words, you're not supposed to be talking to me. For Jews don't associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from, his, drank from it himself and also did his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered her, says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirst again, but whoever, whoever drinks the water that I give will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give 
will become in him a... Now listen, I love this part right here. The water that Jesus is going to give you today is going to be a spring of water welling up through your life. And the way, it reads, the way I read it, indeed the water I give, with, give him will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said, sir, give me some of this water. I, I, would, I'm, I, get so thir- I won't get thirsty because um, so, I have to keep coming here to drink water. He told her, he says, go and call your husband and come back. And this is where it gets interesting. She says, I have no husband, she said. And just reply, Jesus replied to her. He says, you're right when you say you have no husband. Matter of fact, you had five husbands. And the man you have is not your husband. What you have is just said in quiet time. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declares, believe me, woman, there's a time coming when you will worship neither the, neither when you will worship the Father, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet the time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman says, I know the Messiah called Jesus Christ is coming. When he comes... I, I, this is Buster paraphrase. When he comes, I'll believe it. But the way he puts it, it says, when he comes, he will explain everything to me. And Jesus declared, I'm the guy who you're looking for. I am he. So you've got a Samaritan woman. Now here's, here's, here's my thinking on this thing. I, I'm going to tell you something. You just bear with me, kind of pay attention. Don't lose me. The woman came to the well, not by accident. And I can tell you, if she's had five husbands, or five, no, no, no. I don't know what she had, five husbands or five men she lived with or six men. I I don't know, but it said five husbands and one man that she was living with. I can tell you the woman has not found happiness yet. She just can't find it. So she's, she's continually looking for happiness, and she hadn't found it. And here's the other thing, going back to Buster's, uh, let's go to the church, let's go to the church uh, of Samaria, Samaritan, and I'm only, I'm not, let's go to the, the judgmental church of Samaritan. I was trying not to say First Baptist Church of Samaritan. Let's go to the non, the judgmental church of Samaritan. If this woman had a went into the judgmental church of Samaritan, she would not have gotten what she was looking for because she would have been shunned and she would have been sitting on the back row. And I can tell you, there would have been some people there like me back in the day. I said, what is a woman like that doing in our, our midst? But yet God, yet Jesus looks at her, non-judgmental, and accepts her just like she is. Amen. The one thing, there's one thing she had to do Michael, jo- Michael Jackson <laughs> does a song, Got to Make a Change. This woman had to make a change. And she made that change right there. Okay, like I told you, I'm going to try to make this easy. So go to Luke. We're going to back up just a little bit. Go to Luke 19. Another one of those stories that I like a lot, and I'm, the more I read this story, the more fun I have with it. This, so, this story is about Zacchaeus, a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. And he climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. There's a song about that. <laughs> 
All right, starting off, starting off 19, we're going to go 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho, and there they were passing through, and a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see Jesus, but he was short. He was a short man. He could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd, and he climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And Jesus was coming out of way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up at Zacchaeus and he says, Come down immediately, Mr. Zacchaeus. I'm going to stay at your house today, brother. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. The people saw and began to mutter, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Right there. Now listen to this, right here. They hadn't got to his house yet. They're still at the sycamore tree. He climbed down out of the tree, and this is what Zacchaeus says to him. Right there. Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the, Lord, to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'm going to pay him back four times that amount that I cheated him. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to, you, to the house because this man too is the son of Abraham. The son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Have you ever known a man with a little, little man syndrome? Have you ever known anybody like that? I had a boss like that. I can't say that I hated him because that's not biblical, but I didn't like him. I did not. Uh, he had that little man syndrome. Well, anyway, Zacchaeus, you got to understand Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was rich. Because if he can give half of what he owns to the poor and pay back the people that he cheated four times what he, what he had cheated them out of, the guy had a lot of money. And I can tell you, when he went into Brookshire's, when he was pushing his shopping bag around and everybody was, all the people was just barely getting by and he was picking steaks off of the counter and putting them in his basket, they kind of looked at him. And, and I can tell you, when they met him on the street, they didn't want to talk to him. They shut, I, they'd look the other way. I'm, I, don't, I don't like him. He's a thief. He's just, he, I don't like him. And a matter of fact, if you went to his house, I can tell you Zacchaeus had a beautiful home. He had this concrete driveway. He had a Mercedes sitting out there in the driveway with electric gates on it. Oh, um, maybe not. I, I think I'm rushing that. I'm sorry. It hadn't been invented yet. What I can tell you, Zacchaeus, this is Buster paraphrase. It's not biblical. And what I'm telling you right now is not biblical. This is what goes into my mind whenever I read stories like this. Zacchaeus was rich. He had a lot of money. He cheated people out of money. He was unhappy. Read my lips. He was rich. He was unhappy. He was rich and unhappy. And let me tell you something else. Do y'all think Jesus has the Holy Spirit that works in him? Because he says, I give my spirit, I give to you. Do y'all think he has the Holy Spirit? I just question. I do. Jesus has his Holy Spirit. Well, when he went into this town, his Holy Spirit, his knowledge of Zacchaeus came to him. And he knew Zacchaeus was ready to make a change. And the only way. Zacchaeus is going to make a change as if he went to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. Zacchaeus came down and says, I'm going to give everything I got. <laughs> I can tell you if Zacchaeus went to, uh, not First Baptist Church, uh, the, non, the judgmental church, if he had gone to the judgmental church of Jericho, he would not have been welcomed in that church. He would not have been welcomed. Nobody liked him. He was lonely. He had all the money, he, all the money, everything that money could buy. He was lonely and he didn't have it. He just didn't have peace. But yet, when he met Jesus, I'm giving it all up. And let me tell you something. When Jesus says salvation came to you today, Salvation came to Zacchaeus that day. And I can tell you, when he gave half, half of his money to the poor, and when he gave back all the money that he cheated, all of a sudden, the people on the street began to acknowledge Mr. Zacchaeus is coming down the road. 
They might even say, we love you. I don't know. Pretty cool. Another one of my favorite ones. We're just going to back up just a little bit more. We're going to get all the way to Mark now and just back up to the next chapter. We're going to go to Mark 5, 21. This is one of my all-time favorites. All-time favorites. This is my all-time favorite. Just, just a great, great encounter with Jesus. Starting off with 21. When Jesus had crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers, now, yeah, one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus. Now, the synagogue ruler has, is a very important man, okay? Can we just take that? So let's, let's call him the mayor of Dallas, okay? We're going to put it in my terms. The mayor of Dallas had come up to him, to Jesus, and said to Jesus, right there, this is Jairus speaking to him. He fell at his feet and pleaded necessarily. Nestle with, all right, hang on just a second. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So, so Jesus went with him. It says that a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And there was a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, not just one, many doctors. And spent all she had, yet, and then when it says she spent all that she had, she had nothing. She didn't have any money. She spent all she had trying to get well from this bleeding. And she heard about Jesus, and he was coming up, and listen to this. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. This lady had a mountain. In her life. This mountain was a bleeding that she had going on for 12 years. And the minute, the minute she touched Jesus' garment, the mountain came down. She knew immediately. It doesn't say she had to wait two or three days to see how the medicine took hold. She knew immediately that she was healed. Her bleeding had stopped. And it says that, says that she, felt, she felt in her body that she was free from the suffering. I love this. Now, Jesus is supposed to be going to Jairus' house, but listen to this. I can tell you, and, and I, a lot of the stories you'll, you'll read, the disciples kind of covered Jesus up a little bit. So they kind of guarded him. They was, I'd call him their bodyguard, okay? Let's just say Jesus had some bodyguards because there would be children that would want to come to talk to Jesus and he would tell them, you're not going to stop those children from coming and talking to me. You're not going to do it. You're going to let them come on up here and talk to me. Anyway, I lost my train of thought with the horn going off up here. That's all right. <laughs> Anyway, Jesus knew right then and there that some power had left his body. I love this. He turned around in the crowd. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I, I got to believe that this woman was scared to death. I really do. I, because she, she had enough faith. The Bible says, now, in order to move this mountain that she had in her life, that she's been bleeding for 12 years, she had to have the faith of a mustard seed to reach up and touch his garment. She knew in her mind if I can only touch the garment of Jesus, I'm going to be healed. And she did. 
Jesus said, who touched me? And, and the disciples, here they go, looking around. And, and, um, and the disciple says, man, there's so many people here. How can you ask who touched you? Man, there's people all around you. And Jesus says to her, I, I, I just make all this up as I go, but it's biblical. But <laughs> I put it in buster language. But Jesus looked around and he had seen the woman. He says, lady, today, today, your faith, your faith of a mustard seed where you touched my jacket or my cloak healed you. You are healed. Another encounter with Jesus. One more of my favorites. We're going to go. I got a lot of favorite verses. Y'all figure that out. <laughs> Back up to Mark 5. I told you I'm going to keep you closer in Mark 5. We're going to go to Mark 5, and we're going to go to 1 through 20. We're going to talk about some pigs. Who would have thunk they'd have put pigs in the Bible? Everybody there? Mark 5, 1. They went across the lake to the region of Gerasenes. Ger 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 However you pronounce that. You read it. You pronounce it. That's what it is. Excuse me just for a second. I got, Ron, can you shut me up for just a second? If y'all listen to me sniff long enough, you'll finally say, Buster, stop this thing and blow your nose. Get this thing going on. I'm sorry, but that's the way my heart works, and that's the way my nose works, and it's just part of it. So anyway, so they went to this, they, they went across the lake to, to a region of the Gerasons. How's that? When Jesus got out of the boat, there was a man with an evil spirit that came up from the tombs to meet him. The man had lived in the tombs, and, with, and no one could bind him. Anymore, not even with chains, for he often had been chained hand and foot. He tore the chains apart and broke the arms on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Listen to this. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran, he ran down and fell in, at the knees in front of him and he shouted at the top of his voice what do you want with me Jesus son of the most high this is Satan talking he ought now here, let me, I, I'm going to get to the point real quick Satan already knew he was defeated the minute Jesus walked up he was defeated there was no hope for Satan anymore at this point okay Swear to God, that, you, and, and this is Satan speaking to Jesus. He says, swear to God you won't torture me. For Jesus, has, for Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? Pay attention. He says, my name is Legion. He replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. They wanted to stay in that area. And they got to, believe it or not. A large, a large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside, and the demons begged Jesus and said, Send us among those pigs. Allow us to go into them. So he gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out of him and went into the pigs. The herd was about 2,000 in number. I don't care how you look at that. That's a bunch of bacon. 2,000 pigs, absolutely. You can feed on bacon for a while, but there's a bunch of bacon going on right here, and Satan entered the, the pigs here. This is what I love. They rushed down a steep bank into the lake, and they were drowned. Amen, amen, amen. Satan drowned that day. So if I was a pig farmer and I had 2,000 pigs and I just seen all my pigs run into the lake, I probably would have been a little upset myself. 
I know pigs aren't cheap. And, of course, I don't know what pigs cost back in that day. I had to even, I had to even ask. I didn't know if a pig could swim or not. So I go to Google, and I said, can pigs swim? And, the, and you know what it came back is? Pigs can't fly, but they can swim. So I, anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but they drowned. Every one of these pigs drowned. So, tending the pig, so those tending the pigs run off and reported this to the town, the countryside. And the people went out and saw what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by a legion of the demons, sitting there dressed in right mind, and they were afraid. They who had not, they who had seen it, told the people what had happened, and the demon possessed man, and told about the pigs as well. When the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region, when he, as he began to leave, and I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase this, so just for time's sake, as he began to leave this demon-possessed man that was no longer demon-possessed. And what I find very interesting about this, he come up and begged Jesus. He says, can I go with you? Can, can, would you let me go with you? You have, you have done something in my life. I've been living with this for years and years and years. You've done something in my life, and... I want to go with you. And he says, no. He says, I want you to go share with everybody what you've done, what we've done here today. Interesting. The man, nobody knew. The Bible does not tell you what that man's name is. It tells you that Legion was living in him, but it says the man. Everywhere you look at it, it is the man was healed. The man was sitting in the right mind. The man he didn't have a name at that point. I know he had a name. And I know when he went home to be with his, and God, and Jesus told him, go back to be with your family and show them what we've done here. And so he got to go back home and he was in his right mind. Woo! Man, if that don't make the save bumps on you, get up. Something's wrong with you, Savior. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I want to share with you this morning. Every one of you here this morning, you may not have a worry in the world. Satan may not be attacking you right now. Everything may be hunky-dory in your life. But if everything is not hunky-dory in your life, maybe it's time to just stop. And say, Jesus, I want to break this mountain down. Take the weight off that mountain in my life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a minute. If you don't mind, just bow your heads for just a minute. If you're here today and you are one of those people that have got a mountain in your life and it needs to be broke. I pray uh, this morning that you give it over to the Lord. It's time. You have carried it long enough. All you have to have is just the faith of a mustard seed and give it to God, and he will take it and give it to him. Do not take it back. When you give it to him, you need to just pass the buck and say, here, it is yours. I don't want it back. And if you're here this morning and you've never had Jesus come into your life this morning, is a good time to invite him in. It's like ABC. You just got to admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Christ died on the cross for you and commit your life to him and ask him to come into your life. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I'm just, I'm a sinner. And I know I'm a sinner. And Father God, I know you're alive and well today. And Father God, I need you living right in the middle of my heart. Come live in my life and live with me and let me... Uh, and just rid me of all the stuff that's going on in my life and let me live for you. And Father God, you live in me. Father God, we love you and we praise you in your precious name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I, I'm going to be like Brother Reggie. I'm going to say welcome to the family, but I don't want you to get up and leave yet. I, I got one more thing going on before you leave this morning. Uh, we're going to watch one more video, okay? I'm going to ask Ron to turn the lights down in the house. And today, uh, this morning, do not 
punch the person next to you. <laughs> this is time for you and Jesus only. It has got nothing to do with anybody else. Right now, you're not judgmental. I want you to just bask in the arms of Jesus. And with the faith of a mustard seed, Jesus can break down a mountain in your life. Ron, play that for me, brother.